Eh. It's actually not as bad as I thought. Oh, what the fuck? It's that time of the year again, people. Just as the sun always rises, Call of Duty has been released yet again. Who would have thought? And people are already crying about it. I think it is safe to say that a franchise that is this large is always subject to criticism. A lot of it, especially this one. I think the developers have to be used to it at this point. Every single time one of these games come out, they have to just brace themselves. But the difference this year is how divided the community is. From what I have seen in my endeavors across the internet, it seems as if you either love this game or totally hate it. And I'm deeply sorry to tell you this, trigger warning, but this game is good. I think it's fantastic. What the hell's the matter with you? I mean, at least for a Call of Duty game. Now, that doesn't mean this game doesn't have its issues, of course. And it would feel wrong to not whine about a few aspects of the game because, you know, I want to join in on the fun. That's kind of what everyone does with these games, but I'll have to get to some of that later. And also, I want the game to be the best that it can possibly be because I have been enjoying it a lot lately. The biggest issue, of course, being... Not being able to play for more than 10 minutes without seeing that. As somebody who has become a sort of battlefield elitist the past several years, I have to give it to Infinity Ward for their efforts with this one. I have always felt that the tactical aspect and realistic feel to the weapons in the Battlefield franchise has sort of put Call of Duty in the dirt for me over the past several years like it couldn't be matched. Actually, my favorite part about this game is how much the gunplay reminds me of Battlefield. How do you make Call of Duty good again? You just make a Battlefield game. The gunplay in this game has been so well honed and polished. These developers have been making these games for what feels like centuries. I believe the first one came out during the reign of the Roman Empire, and they're finally getting the feel of it down to a T. Everything from weapon inspects, reloads, the sounds, the sights, there's no denying it is impressive. It is the first true next-gen Call of Duty game, and I have not been this interested or addicted to the core gameplay loop of a COD game in probably a decade. It is just fun to play, which is what, of course, the most important aspect of any shooter is. Is it fun to shoot stuff in the video game where you're supposed to shoot stuff? If the answer is yes, chances are I may like your game. Now, a point that I must make is that this game has to feel the least Call of Duty-like out of all the games in the franchise, and maybe that's why I've been enjoying it so much these first few weeks of launch. I know that at heart, Call of Duty has always been a very cracked out game. Just extremely fast-paced, everybody snorts their G Fuel before hopping onto the game, they get their Doritos and their Mountain Dew with the codes on it for their double XP and then they just hop on doing 360s. But this game actually strikes a good balance between those slow and fast paced moments. Just seems like there's a real weight behind your character and your weapons in this one. The absolutely atrocious slide cancelling for Modern Warfare 2019 has been almost completely nullified in this one and that is a huge change for me as well. Game of the year right here just for removing that garbage. You are now able to slide and dolphin dive, which I love. They seem to be more useful now than ever before. I find myself using both of these at least a couple times a game to escape death or just to put myself in a better position. People are complaining, saying there's no movement in this game. Well, the amount of times that people dive and jump around a corner and 360 auto-aim to my head and delete me from the match says otherwise. It's still there. It is still a Call of Duty game at heart. And I think if you're tired of the endless camo grinds and jump shotting that Call of Duty has offered over the past 100 years of releases, then the new gameplay improvements may not be enough for you. You get what you pay for with this, and what you pay for is $10 more with a shiny new $75 price tag. Like, is this the new standard? Like, this is the first game that I've seen that costs $75. I, I, I'm genuinely confused. Is Infinity War getting away with something here? Are, are they scheming? Are they getting some sort of special treatment? Why do they get to mark theirs at 75 I mean, what's 10 extra dollars, right? Except for when things get marked up by another 10 and then another 10 and then by the time the PlayStation 6 is out, I'm sure we're going to have to pay triple digits for games. Inflation is tough, man. Oh, we were talking about the video game, weren't we? Weapon customization has reached a new tier this year. Being able to fine-tune weapons down to the decimal point once you get the gun fully leveled up, and it's pretty impressive. But the extremely fast time to kill almost makes me feel like it's all for nothing. You're gonna die quick, and probably a lot in this. There's a good amount of variety with the maps in this game as well. No two maps are very similar. 
They're not the best maps we've seen, but there's some fun locations such as a hotel in Amsterdam to a Formula One racetrack, which are probably two of my favorite. Uh, a bit controversial these maps are, because Infinity Ward I believe is damn near getting sued for these. The hotel map is based on a real life location and Formula One is a real thing that probably doesn't want to be associated with Call of Duty. They did not have permission to do that one. And they also had to remove the museum map that was in the beta. I'm sure that was based off of a real place too, so we're probably going to be down to about three to four maps in the coming weeks, so be prepared for that. This game was getting absolutely blasted the first few days it came out, saying that it's been stripped away of all its most basic features that Call of Duty has come to know for the past many years. But these features such as prestige or being able to check your stats have been added with this new Season 1 update. Revolutionary. Very interesting design choice. I honestly think it may have just been a ploy to to like keep people's attention for the first couple weeks they're like oh those features are coming but nevertheless they're in the game now so people could stop bitching about it i think it may have made more sense for the game to just come out on november 16th with this update but who cares what i think nobody really nobody cares what i think now the bigger game modes in this certainly deliver the much needed variety from the traditional 6v6 that we have been playing for the past 50 years truly a nice change of pace and it lets you into a more chaotic sandbox style of play kind of like something else i know of course the true large chaotic sandbox moments will be found in warzone 2 or dmz two modes that will certainly be the highlight of this game for a lot of people they're better played with a squad and require actual communication and sometimes thinking which does not come with traditional call of duty multiplayer typically warzone is just one of those game modes where you can just go total tryhard into it if you want to and absolutely sink your life away into it which is what I've been doing for the past several days instead of making this f***ing video. It has just been so much fun to squad up with the boys. And by that, I mean play with people for maybe 1% of the time I've played this game, because every single time I message somebody to squad up, they already tell me that their squad is full. I think I'm gonna go play some right now, because this game absolutely has me by its claws right now, and it delivers moments that truly remind me of better. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not going to say it.